so I'm actually here today to talk about two things. Uh, my first topic is social media brand equity. Um, and the second thing is uh, I'll get into some of the latest insights we have around how social is evolving on the mobile platform. But first, brand equity. Um, that question that you see up there, how, do I, how should I think about my brand equity on social media, is a question that we are often asked by our clients, uh, namely the brand advertisers. Uh, they're really struggling with this. Yes, they know that they need to build a community. They know that they need to uh, engage and interact with customers online. Uh, but they very much still think about marketing and brand the way they've grown up in the offline world. And they're looking for ways to sort of think about, think about brand in social in the similar ways. So we at Nielsen have tried to tackle that question. And I want to talk to you a little bit about it today and share what we've uh, learned about the India market. So, so just to just sort of level set, uh, these are the challenges that our clients come to us with, right? They're doing social media campaigns. They're getting more Facebook fans. They're getting more Twitter followers. Um, but there's no easy uh, way to measure uh, what, uh, what they're getting for all of that effort, besides simply the number of fans and so on. And what they've come to us with is, uh, these are their requirements, right? They've said, I want something that I can track over time. Uh, I want to be able to understand the impact that what I'm doing online and what I'm doing offline, how does it all fit together? Um, I want to cover a wide range of social media platforms because they know that the online world is not limited just to Facebook and Twitter. Um, and they want to have some way to get at this important question of engagement. And I know I think a couple people have already talked about it. And we'll, I'll share you uh, our take on engagement. And finally, they want to be able to benchmark themselves against others in the category. Right? It's always about how am I doing relative to my competition. So we set out to define social media brand equity. And we broke it down into five components. Uh, first, we look at how many unique people are talking about you. So we call that unique authors. Right? Uh, second, we look at what buzz levels do you have. Right? I think a lot of brands today are already following buzz. Uh, and we wanted to incorporate that into uh, our definition of brand equity. Uh, third, of course, is the following. How many fans, how, uh, how many fans you have on Facebook, and how many followers you have on Twitter. Uh, and the, both, both one and three are important, right? So you could have five million fans, but if only 50 people are talking about you, that, that matters. Uh, fourth is what we call presence. So what, what I mean by presence is, um, what's the uh, breadth of coverage that you have? So you might have decent conversation going on in Facebook or decent conversation going on Twitter, but how about on the blogs and the forums and other platforms that exist in social? Because for us, we, we, uh, we, all, we often counsel our, our, our clients not to be too focused on just two platforms. It's a very quickly changing field, and they need to have as, as wide of a scope, as wide as of a lens when they're thinking about uh, the community. Uh, and then lastly is sentiment. Um, so I think a couple of people have already talked about it today as well. So are, are, when people are talking about you, is it uh, positively inclined, negatively inclined, and so on? So uh, we looked at, to start out, we looked at 400 brands in India. Uh, and we looked at 12 months of data, so all of 2011. And we covered all social media comments and conversations on Facebook, Twitter, blogs, and forums. And the idea behind this is, and I'll reveal the ranking. Some of you might have already seen this. But the idea for this is we're going to do this on a quarterly basis and help our clients understand um, as, change, as things change in the social media uh, space or sphere, how are they doing in terms of their equity online. So in our first rankings, um, uh, uh, Samsung ended up in the number one spot. And I'll share with you the, the, the top 20 just for the uh, uh, sake of illustrate. Uh, illustrating uh, what we found. So Samsung was a clear leader, right? So what are they doing well? So not only do they have a sizable community in terms of following and, and fans and so on, but they're doing a great job generating conversation, uh, positively inclined conversation related to their phones. Now they're getting a huge boost from Android. So there's, a, there's sort of a halo effect in being uh, associated with Android because uh, Android has so much positive buzz and so much conversation. Uh, so th those two things sort of go hand in hand. And as you look at through the rest of the list, and I'll go through the top 20, you'll see that telecom and auto do particularly well. Uh, so handsets is one thing. Um, uh, in terms of auto, 
Uh, so why, do the, why is Ford up there? Why is Maruti up there? Um, people love talking about their cars. Uh, people love talking about whether it's the car that they own today or whether it's the one that they hope to buy, more of an aspirational thing. They like talking about trips that they're going to take with their cars. They like posting photos of their cars, how they're going to customize their cars, and so on. So the auto sector is doing particularly well engaging uh, Indian uh, digital consumers. Uh, a couple other names to highlight here. Nike. Uh, Nike's always been a digital uh, stalwart. Very, very well uh, in, in digital campaigns. Um, last year, this is now looking at 2011 data, 12 months. Uh, they got a very uh, positive uh, push from uh, the World Cup uh, uh, Bleed Blue campaign that they did, and that gave them a boost throughout the year. They're very good at um, combining offline and online together, and they put a lot of thought into how do I integrate the two. And if you look at, um, I don't have the exact numbers, but if you look at how Nike allocates its budget, it is at the forefront of, of, uh, of pushing most or a lot of its uh, budget over to the digital space. Flipkart. Uh, that was a bit of a surprise for us that it would be up here with some of the more well-established brands. But clearly, given its cu customer base is online, um, uh, it, gets, it gets an edge when it comes to the, uh, connecting with digital consumers. Um, and another thing that uh, helps Flipkart rise to the top is it's, it's great customer service or perceived great customer service. People love talking about how Flipkart was responsive, how they got their delivery on time, how their exchange was not a problem, and so on. So that's given Flipkart a big boost. Sort of rounding out the, the 20, a couple, of, a couple others to, uh, to call out. Maggie, uh, the only FMCG brand to finish in the top 20. Um, we've got, when, when this uh, report first came out, we had a lot of questions around, how could that be? Uh, why are they up there? Uh, fairly sort of an older bland, uh, brand, perhaps not known to be digitally savvy. And um, the bottom line is they've done a great job of connecting with, the, uh, with people who are online. Why? Um, people are passionate about talking about recipes related to Maggie. They're passionate about talking about um, when they want to have Maggie and what, in what settings, at what time of the day, uh, which flavor they like or they don't like. Uh, and Nestle's done a great job of fostering that and encouraging that. And so they've, gotten, um, they've done very well in the social media space. And then you see the um, couple of the uh, telecom operators stacked right next to each other, Airtel, Vodafone, Docomo. Um, and I'll go into a deep dive uh, of those uh, uh, companies in a second. Um, and then uh, rounding up with Xbox and BMW and Sony. So what, what for me, um, it's either, uh, uh, there's a, the brands have either been good at connecting in terms of having conversations with, uh, with um, uh, their customers. I think that's a common trait across all of these brands. Or uh, there's an aspirational element to it because uh, con consumers want to associate themselves with these brands when they are online, right? It becomes a part of your identity when you say, I am a follower, I like, and I start engaging with you. So now just to delve into uh, telecom a little bit, uh, this might be difficult for you guys to read, especially in the back of the room. Um, but what I wanted to do is I just wanted to use this as a, as a way to illustrate. So once we have these rankings, what do we do with them? Um, how is this helpful for a brand? This, this, this is a starting point in a diagnostic to say, okay, where are you doing well along our five uh, dimensions and where can you improve? So, um, you know, when this came out, Docomo had a lot of questions. Uh, I have more fans than anyone else. How could, how could I rank so low, relatively speaking? Uh, well, it turns out, um, uh, Airtel is, is much better at engaging customers when it comes to having more people talk about Airtel. Airtel is better at generating buzz levels. Airtel is better at having presence across the various social media platforms. It's not just uh, an arms race to see who can have the greatest number of fans or who can have the greatest number of followers. So this is sort of a simplistic red light, yellow light, green light sort of dashboard scoreboard that we're using with our clients to talk about uh, how to diagnose how you've done so far and where you should focus your efforts as you plan out your next wave of campaigns and digital efforts. A uh, similar story in um, handsets. Um, I think Nokia had some questions for us when this came out. Um, they're a very well-established brand in India. They've been, they've been around a, a long time. The question was, how come that's not carrying over to, uh, to the digital space? to the social media space. And when you look at it on uh, sort of metric by metric or dimension by dimension, someone like a Samsung today is doing better than Nokia. 
Now, still, both are top 20 brands, and so I think that says a lot. Uh, they have, uh, they've come a long way in connecting with digital consumers, and this is just giving you sort of a relative scorecard on how they're doing. And finally, uh, on auto, this is my last one. Uh, I know these are hard to read. So just wanted to call out, um, uh, some people were surprised by Ford. So Ford uh, does not necessarily have as big of a market share uh, in India. Um, how is it able to do better than, uh, better than Maruti Suzuki? Well, it turns out uh, on, on one of our dimensions, on sentiment, they do better than Suzuki, and that sort of put them over the top. So we, we're very much in favor of taking this very holistic approach at looking at how you're doing versus your competition and seeing where you can do better. It's, very, it's constantly evolving, and when we come out with our next r rankings in, in uh, uh, four weeks or so, I very much expect some of, some of these brands to change, and we might very well have new entrants into the top 20. So that, that's a very quick run through of how we think about brand equity in social media. And for uh, a couple of more minutes, I uh, just wanted to touch on one other topic, which is uh, mobile. So one thing that we're uh, also talking to our clients is as they, fig as they think about their next wave of campaigns and as they figure out how to stay relevant or how to stay in our top 20 when it comes to uh, connecting with digital consumers, uh, we're very much uh, telling them to focus on the mobile screen. Um, here's why. So uh, we know that Indians spend a lot of time on, on smartphones. They're spending more than two hours per day on smartphones. And only 25% of that is on communication. Right? The rest of the time, they're on apps, they're on the mobile uh, internet, they're watching video, they're listening to music, they're taking pictures, and so on. So uh, the phone is becoming less and less a communication device as we traditionally think of it when it comes to voice or SMS, and much more of a multimedia, much more of a social device. And so this has huge ramifications for brands as they figure out how do I connect with Indian digital consumers. And this is, uh, and this is even a greater, uh, this is even a greater uh, trend for the youth. The time spent on smartphones in, uh, increases as age decreases. So where does social stack up in this? Now, when we look at everything that you can do on your phone, uh, the most prevalent by, uh, by far is, is search, and you would expect that, right? You're often on your, uh, on your phone uh, Googling something, looking up an address, or, and so on. Number two, right behind it, is social networking, right? So it's already quite prevalent when it comes to the mobile experience. So when brands are thinking about the social experience and, again, how to connect with, uh, with the digital consumers, we say think about mobile, the mobile screen. Um, not only is the reach there, so over 70% right, of, of smartphone users uh, uh, interacting and, and being active on social platforms, the time spent is also there. Um, uh, you, the, I don't know if you guys can read this well. The numbers are a little bit small. But as an example, um, Facebook is already uh, averaging around 200 minutes or uh, 220 minutes uh, per user uh, every month on, on their app. And this is app data alone. Uh, we, we're not even factoring in the mobile data. So that's a decent amount of time, three hours already, where um, uh, users on smartphones are uh, using uh, Facebook. Twitter is a little bit lower. Uh, it started out back in September. I think it was around uh, 80 or 90 minutes per month, and now it's around 120 minutes per month. And we expect these numbers to grow. And finally, uh, where I'm going to sort of wrap up is, um, okay, so they're, they're there. There's the reach. There's the time spent. There's another element to mobile, which, um, uh, which we're encouraging um, brands to think about, which is there are a lot of touch points uh, in a given day uh, uh, with social on the mobile screen. So uh, the average user, the average Facebook user, is um, checking Facebook at least three or four times a day. Now, there's some, this is an average number, so there are many more who are way above that. And so if I were a brand, I'd have to think about that, right? So uh, three or four times a day, I'm pulling up uh, my Facebook um, news feed, and I'm checking not only on what my friends are doing, but certainly if I'm a fan of a brand or if I'm following uh, someone on Twitter, I see it come up. Now, Twitter numbers are a little lower. Um, it's somewhere around two or three times a day. And then LinkedIn and Google Plus sort of fall, trails off. And I put in, um, on the right-hand side, I put in a couple of other apps just to give you guys a sense of comparison. So the number one uh, game on smartphones is Angry Birds, no surprise. 
number of sessions per day, right, is just essentially one. So if they're going to it 34 times in a month, that's about roughly one a day. News Hunt, the number one news app, uh, about two to three times a day. And then you have your chat apps, right, Nimbus and WhatsApp. And you'd expect high frequency with those. So social networking is somewhere in between. Um, but for us, the, 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 the wow factor was, okay, there's already a lot of interaction happening on the mobile screen, and brands need to figure out what to do there. And that's, uh, that's, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, Prashad.